Mr. Bamford Rose and it's classified chat time. This week it's an Aston which you can purchase for under 35k. This is most likely going to be for buyers dipping their toe into Aston ownership for the first time. It's certainly going to cover V8 Vantage and DB9 and also cover DB7 with the inline six engine and the V12 Vantage. I thought we were just about going to shave in at the starting price for a 4.7 V8 and I'll show one of those. But the big surprise and the star of this week's classified chat is this 2010 Rapide. I didn't think we were going to get a Rapide feature in this under 35k bracket. So here's an original launch model from 2010 showing 59,000 miles up at 31,990. Usual repeat refinements. And this actually presents rather well. Looks quite striking. Saying that it's very, very hard to fault this car and it's just had a service from Aston Martin main dealer. Rapides on the whole are very good mechanically. They're not exact like for like electronic architecture compared to the DB9. The Achilles heel of Rapide is electrical gremlins. Normally it just needs resetting with a laptop and kicking back into life. If this car is harboring no problems and all the wear items are good, you don't need to replace them immediately like tires and brakes, then this really is a cracking buy for £31,990. So we start the search proper at the lower end and of course we're going to find some DB7 inline sixes and there's quite a lot hovering around this price bracket. The inline six is a specialist niche purchase. And it's the timeless, beautiful looks of a DB7. But the inline six engine, even though it has a supercharger, isn't the most enthralling of drives, which is why the factory quickly updated to the V12 Vantage. And as you can see here, for pretty much the same money, you can seek out a V12 Vantage model. So in summary, when it comes to talking about the inline six, then really, if you must, then seek out one. But the V12 Vantage variety is definitely the one to go for. For an extra 8K up at 28 is this beautiful V12 Vantage Volante. Now, whether it's buying a DB7 at the bottom of the price range or higher up, you really, really must either know your way around them and inspect the car for yourself to know that you're not buying a money pit or you get someone to do a pre-purchase inspection who does know their way around the cars. For a Concours DB7, the market is probably stretching around about the 50K mark at this moment in time, which is a lot of money to spend on a DB7. In the searching that I've done, I don't think you could go far wrong than this one. It's V12, it's a Volante, and importantly, it's stick shift. The manual is a much more engaging drive over the auto. And at 58,000 miles, manual, soft top, great color combination. At 29,950 pounds, if you really wanted the DB7 looks, and classic ownership experience, this one is gonna to be tough to beat. Here's the lowest price DB9 I can find on the market at 23,500. Now there's a lot of DB9 out there for this price or just slightly higher. And with so many DB9 out there at that price point, going for the DB7 makes the DB7 really a, a choice of the classic enthusiasts going for the DB7. And in comparison, the DB9's driving dynamics are quite literally of this century, where the DB7 is quite literally of last century. If you're in two minds whether to go for a DB7 or a DB9, then go for the DB9. This particular DB9 is boasting 11,000 pounds worth of work done at its most recent service, which together with the major service looks like it included a front cover seal. To do a front cover seal properly, you have to take the engine out. And more than likely with a bill of 11,000 pounds probably meant that that engine did come out. That's good news because if the engine did come out, then you're pretty much guaranteed that this engine hasn't got the dreaded DB9 engine tick 
because if it did, then it would have obviously been repaired whilst the engine was out. Obviously buying at the bottom end comes with much caution. You need to make sure that you're not buying a money pit. You're not buying wear and tear that previous owners have placed on the car and you have to renew to get more mileage out of it. But going off face value of the advert and the purchase price of this DB9, and at £23,500, there's a lot going for this car. And always close to the entry point of DB9 was going to be a 4.3 V8 Vantage. And here we picture one at £24,990 with 71,000 miles on the clock. In recent weeks and months, the market has hardened it a little. And about 25k is probably the right starting point for V8 Vantage. It's just that with 71,000 miles, I think this car should be a bit cheaper than what it's advertised for. And probably 20k is closer to the right asking price for a car with that mileage on being a private sale. Up the money to 30k on a V8 Vantage and you're always going to find quite a few advertised. So here's a good one at 40,000 miles up at 30,980, at half the mileage than the previous car, up at 5k more, then this is the car that I'll be going for. And again on DB9, you don't have to spend that much more to find a, an example with significantly less miles. Private sale, 31,500 pounds, 30,000 miles on the clock, and with a bit of bartering on the drive, you'll probably walk away with this car at 30,000 pounds. Because there's quite a few for sale, DB9 market is competitive. So to stand a chance of selling, then everyone has to keep their prices keen. But every once in a while, there's a car which stands out as being great value, and this is one of them. 33,950 pounds, 15,000 miles on the clock. And you can tell by the advert that this car has been cherished and has been well looked after by its two previous keepers. In my experience of DB9 in the workshop, a car like this is just going to give the owner a heck of a lot less hassle than a much higher mileage example. Meaning that between this car at 33,950 and this car at 23,500, sooner or later, this car at 23,500 is going to consume some cash in a workshop. Whereas this car might be a bit kinder to you, meaning that after a couple of years of ownership, you're all up a price on this lower mileage car. It could well be less than the purchase price and the repair costs of the higher mileage example. Meaning that if you can stretch the budget to get yourself in the best seat car possible, it is worth spending that extra money. We'll round off with a 4.7 V8 Vantage that we've squeezed in under the 35K at 33,980. Really low mileage as well for that sale price. Color combo won't be to everyone's choosing though. But again, if you were looking at some 4.3 V8s at the late 20s and you could just hang on, save a bit more up, and get a 4.7 like this, then it's definitely worth buying the 4.7 over the 4.3. And finally, I was quite surprised that a Rapide managed to get into this search uh, under 35K. And we got a 4.7 V8, we got DB9s, and we got DB7 in line six and V12. One car that I did not want to see in the search was one of these. What a hideous creation this is. A befitting color, turd brown, and obviously previous owners that embarrassed about the car, they could only be bothered to do 7,800 miles in it. Apart from a punt in 10 years, it being worth something, why would anybody buy this over a DB7 V12, a Volante manual? a DB9 or a V8 Vantage. Not boasting an array of accessories. It's saddening to see that of the list of optional extras of what this car comes with, it doesn't come with two brown paper bags to put over your head. But I'm sure it's very reliable, very frugal, and very jazzy on the inside. Hope you like that roundup of Aston's available for under 35K. We apologize to viewers for subjecting you to the Signet. It really helps us if you can like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next classified chat.